take a deep breath. <laughs> uh, well, thanks for being here. It's really nice to get to meet you and Likewise. we'll just dive right into the interview because okay. I've been really, really excited to talk about this. Yeah, I'm excited to talk to you. Well, thanks. Um, so why don't you tell people for um, those of those of my listeners who don't know you yet, um, a little bit about your background, maybe like, you know, your, what you do or what, what you're doing in the world. And, um, and then I want to touch back on like your family of origin, your parents, just sort of how were you raised and how that's influenced, um, where you are today. So. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So, um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Laura and I am an RTT practitioner by trade, but I am an energy worker by soul and spirit essentially. Um, so I, you know, since I was a small child, I had connection to spirit. And of course, as you get older, sometimes that dampens a little bit because life gets you. Um, but I would say in the last five years or so, it's, it's come back really strong for me. Um, and it's been informing all of the work that I do with my clients. So, um, I have primarily focused on working with, um, people to heal physical chronic illnesses. Um, and I'm sort of continuing to do that, but also pivoting so that I can work with women who have experienced sexual trauma in their lives. Oh, see, I saw that um, Jess Lively was doing sponsorships through her new foundation yeah. for um, recipients that have experienced sexual trauma. So yeah. that's amazing. Well, and you've already done the RTT training, so exactly. You don't need to start there. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about like how you were raised. You look like you're quite a bit younger than me. You're kind of, are you a millennial? I am a millennial. Um, I sort of bucked the stereotype of millennials a little bit, I think. Um, I'm less of the city dwelling, avocado toast eating um, version of us that, you know, those who came before tend to frown upon. But um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I love you guys. You're, you're going to change the world. I hope so. I hope so. Um, so yeah, I am a millennial. I, um, let's see my background. So my family of origin, I have, I come from a divorced family, um, which was such a blessing in so many ways because I have an incredible bonus mom and two amazing sisters that came from that. And, um, I have an incredible brother who came from, you know, who's my mother's son. And, um, with my dad and it's just beautiful. Um, he and I were very, very close growing up and we're still very, very close. So I've always had that um, very close family sibling relationship there, which is amazing. Um, and some of the other beautiful pieces of coming from a divorced home is that I had the pleasure of spending a lot of time with um, cousins. So I have cousins who are very much like siblings to me, which, I, I just think is so beautiful and I love it when I see you know, my friends are having children and their siblings are hanging out with their cousins. And I just think cousins are such a powerful, um, sibling to grow up with. So mm, just, just a little bit of the background there, but I'm a new Englander born and raised. Um, so yeah, okay. Red Sox fan and all of that good stuff. <laughs> Red Sox fan. Oh, that's <laughs> exciting. I know I come from a big family and my brother is always like so sad that I don't live close to my family because they all live by each other. They all have kids and um, I'm in Ohio. They're all in like Minnesota area. So yeah. I, I appreciate that. And I have done a podcast on the, the soul connections that I feel yeah. like we have through our siblings. And, um, so that's, that is really cool. Yeah, it's so great. let's get into your awakening, your sort of what shifted in your life, because I know that I'm really interested in this idea of physical healing. And so I want to talk about that a lot. Um, so why don't you just share the story of your um, healing and, and how that's yeah. affected your life. Yeah, sure. So, um, let's see. So I am 32 now and through all of my twenties, I suffered from 
uh, just a variety of chronic illness related things. So um, the final sort of diagnosis that I was given was fibromyalgia um, with something called Sjogren's syndrome, which is when your body's um, cells attack the cells that create water. So you end up with very dry skin, dry eyes, dry mouth, like all kinds of other different things, but it is all um, creates fatigue and um, general pain and, and all that really unpleasant stuff. Um, so I started dealing with all of that um, when I was 21, 22 years old. And I was at the time working three different jobs and I started my career as a reporter. So there was a lot of, just a lot of like moving around and being all over the place and exhaustion that kind of comes with that. But I, I started noticing, um, having gone through having Lyme disease before that, that I just never really was quite right after. And, um, and I, I tell you all of this because it was so um, trying to figure out how to feel better. I wanted to be someone who could be an advocate for and show people who were suffering like this, that you could live well, even if you were, you know, sick. Um, and so I sort of started by like becoming a yoga teacher and trying to, you know, feel into my body and not be afraid of my body by doing that. Um, which has just been so amazing. And I really miss teaching sometimes, but, um, but that was a huge piece of it. And it also helped me to find a doctor who would take me seriously because I had all these doctors who looked at me and said, you're in your twenties. Like we can't help you. You're not sick enough. Get out of my office. And, um, and it's really disheartening, you know? Um, and when you're sick, it's really isolating and lonely and nobody really gets it. And it's just, it's a whole thing. And I know all the spoonies will be sitting there nodding their heads going, yep, yeah, I feel ya. Um, so really truly it started with yoga but then um truthfully i'm you know i am divorced and it was my gifts started really coming in with my with that happening so um i started reawakening at the point where my intuition came in and said this is what's going on you need to get out of this relationship so where like time wise was can you give us like some yeah. markers Absolutely. So um, I really got to see a doctor who was super helpful to me when I was about 25, 26. Um, I was married when I was 24. And between 24 and I think I was 27, 28, when I, when I finally decided to leave the marriage, um, I was getting stronger. My health was getting stronger. Um, my belief in myself was getting stronger. And the clarity was coming in. And my intuition came back real hard. Um, and I started listening to it and it was something that everybody was shocked when I said, I'm getting divorced because they had no idea that anything was even wrong. Um, but I just knew, and I didn't tell them, well, you know, my intuitive voice kicked in and it became very clear that this was the right step because, you know, um, my, don't yeah, get that. I don't get that. Um, and, and my family is lovely and supportive and, you know, I'm sure they'll listen to this and be like, you know, you should have just told us that because you've always been a little bit, you know, spiritual and woo woo. But, um, but that's truly when it started for me. And that's when I, you know, found Just Lively and The Lively Show and found Brooke Castillo and, um, you know, all of that stuff that sort of propelled me forward to where I am now, where I am, you know, I'm a Reiki practitioner and a yoga teacher, but I'm an RTT practitioner and a channel. So, um, you know, I'm working with my clients to channel messages for them and help them really get to the core of what needs to be healed. Wow. That's a great, um, I, I love all of it. <laughs> I'm trying <laughs> to focus in on something you said about how going through that divorce helped to awaken your intuition more. And I feel like that has been happening so much and maybe it's like around a couple years ago or like 2012 was like a big you know mind calendar and the whole um so maybe was that about the same time 2012 no it was 2017 i think okay. so 2017 um, was like divorce awakening of intuition yeah. 
But I will say, I mean, 2012 sounds about the right time where I started having the quote quarter life crisis. Um, you know, you hit 25 and developmentally your brain is, is fully formed. And I kind of started realizing, you know, I've been playing this role and on this path that just really isn't me. This is not who I am. Um, and it's, it's really scary to wake up one day and go, oh my gosh, I've made all of these really huge life choices based on this like imaginary person that I created. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's like the persona um, mentality. And I talk about that in my book, like mine was a midlife crisis, sort of. And as you awaken more and are more connected to your intuition, I feel like then you can transfer it to healing, yeah. which then will help you to move past it as a crisis and move towards something that's um, positive change. So then what happened? So then what happened? So I, um, let's see what happened. I, I had my first RTT session myself. Um, would say about a year after that. And I worked on specifically the fibromyalgia and the chronic pain. Um, and I just was so blown away that I could go in in excruciating pain and come out two hours later feeling completely light and free and tired because it's exhausting to, you know, go through the emotions and tap into all of that. But, um, but it, it totally changed the game for me because trying to show people how to live well with a chronic illness just never felt right to me. And here I was, like I stumbled upon this thing that literally took away the chronic pain. So um, that just became, I needed to do that. And that became the focus. And, um, and it's, it's been an incredible journey ever since, basically just sort of letting things unfold and talking to my intuition and having that lead to, you know, talking to spirit or whatever it is that you channel when you're channeling. Um, it, it's been incredible. Yeah. So how do you feel your, did you find like childhood trauma or did you find some, um, maybe we should walk people through this RTT process since I haven't sure. had anyone talk about it yet, even though yeah. I am in the training myself. I'm so oh, yeah. excited. Um, why don't you just kind of explain what RTT does and maybe how some of those things that were brought up in your session connected to your healing? Yeah, sure. So for that particular session, just to sort of walk through, um, what we do at the beginning is just try to decide how do you want to feel? How do you want to show up in the world? How do you want your health to be? And that's what it was for me specifically, of course. Um, you know, what are the big dreams that you have? Let's let's talk about that so we can get really clear and create messages for your subconscious that helps to propel you in that direction. Um, and then what we do is we go into regression and we do that by moving into hypnosis, which essentially is, um, I keep calling it meditation on steroids because you are um, settling down the central nervous system so much that you're just feeling totally relaxed and it allows your brain waves to slow down. So you move beyond that REM brainwave that you experience when you're dreaming and sleeping down into theta. And in theta, your subconscious mind is present and able to communicate with you. And therefore we're able to dig into it to understand, um, any sort of root memories that are contributing to a trauma, um, or, you know, an illness or whatever it is that you're experiencing. So for me, when we dug into the fibromyalgia specifically, um, we uncovered a lot from my parents' divorce that I haven't had necessarily processed. And it wasn't that it was, the divorce itself was not traumatic by any stretch, but what it did do is, um, I, what I was looking for was love and support from my dad um, because he, I think he, at the time as the child, he was the parent that was most like, he was up with us in the mornings and singing songs and feeding us breakfast and doing all that stuff. And he still did that absolutely after the divorce, but I just really wanted to connect with him even more. Um, and so I, you know, fibromyalgia was something that the, my aunts on my dad's side of the family all experienced, my grandmother experienced. And so it became the way that my body could say, hey, if you have this thing, 
then you're going to get the love and support that you need. And so it created that for me to protect me and keep me safe and make sure that I got my needs met. Um, so once we understood that through the regression phase, uh, we were able to look at it and I could say, you know what, I'm the adult who takes care of me now. I'm the adult who makes sure my needs get met and I don't need this anymore to keep me safe and protect me. So I released it, um, which was amazing. And then we did um, the transformation part, which is a recorded part of the session so that you can take it away and listen to it for 21 days. But um, for me specifically, it was very much, you know, geared toward becoming an amazing yoga teacher and feeling comfortable in my skin and all of that, plus some healing vortex, which is really incredible. Um, it's like this beautiful healing, like light or whatever the practitioner decides it to be that moves through your whole body and your, all the different systems and clears away, um, anything from like toxins to trapped emotions, um, so that you can really just clean everything out and get, re get everything realigned again. Um, and it just was absolutely amazing for me. So there was nothing deeply, deeply traumatic, but I had never, I, I didn't feel upset about my parents being divorced. Even as a child, I knew it was exactly the right thing for everyone. So, um, but, but apparently I had been upset. So, you know, you got to work through some of that stuff or it sits in your body. Mm -hmm. And is that healing vortex part of RTT? Yes. I, okay. I haven't got there yet. Then. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you'll love it. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, so how do you feel like comparing, um, uh, you know, going to a traditional doctor and saying, I know for myself, I had like a pain in my chest and it was classified as inflammation. And I think that's a similar thing to fib fibromyalgia. Mm -hmm. Um, how, how do you think just the two compare? Like, do you think they're even in the same, um, I mean, I feel like when I went to the medical doctor, he was like, you know, lots of things cause inflammation. We don't really know how to get to the root of it. And my whole change of thinking on physical disease and that they, it comes more from our emotion. Yeah. Like, what are your thoughts on that and sort of where just the whole medical even system is going today? Yeah, sure. So it's, it's all really fascinating. Um, I, my rheumatologist, I love her. I think she's amazing. I send anybody who's experiencing chronic illness to her. Um, because I do think that there is a place for that very, like, as we know it, clinical medicine. Um, but I think that that's really only one piece of the puzzle. And where I felt like, um, I, I always refer to it as medical science, where I felt medical science was really letting me down as it wasn't looking at the whole being. So um, just as I would recommend anybody go to my rheumatologist, I will also send them to my functional medicine practitioner. Because what functional medicine stands to do is they sit down with you in your first meeting and talk to you for two hours about your whole life. So your entire timeline, every single thing that you've ever experienced right up until you sitting in that office. Um, and just by looking at that piece of it and saying, yeah, your parents were divorced and because of these things you experienced abandonment and because of this you experienced whatever the case may be, my, do my functional medicine doctor could look at me and say, yeah, I think that you have chronic stress and because of that you have inflammation. And, um, and then he started treating me with food and with supplements. And, um, and I told him about RTT and he said, you got to do more of that. So, um, it, it was amazing because I could heal my body from the inside with the food that it really needed and to give it the supplements that it really needed. But then when I could work with my subconscious mind, I could dig in and make sure that I was getting that mental emotional support that I needed to release any of the trapped emotions and trauma that I had experienced in the past. And the two of those things combined, um, I, I notice with RTT and, it, and it, it totally depends on what you're working with and um, you know, what you're trying to achieve. And for me, it's, it's almost always been very focused on having some sort of physical release. And so um, with one of my sessions, what came out of it was a complete shift in my hormones that triggered my cycle to start earlier. 
And it was all tied into the work I had been doing with my functional medicine doctor. And when I told him about that, he got up from his chair, he did a little dance, and then he proceeded to draw the hormonal cycle on his whiteboard to explain to me what happened when I released the trapped emotions. And he just looked at me and said, you are so powerful because you're healing your body with your mind. It's amazing. And everybody needs to be doing this. Oh I mean, it, it doesn't, and he's a, he is a doctor. Like he, tr he has a real true medical background and then went on to study functional medicine because he saw that there was more needed. And it was just like, uh, it was the most gratifying, amazing moment to have him look at me and just say, this is incredible. You need to do more of this. You need to help all kinds of other women. And like, and he's like, everybody needs to be looking at their minds. <laughs> so, oh, you know, <laughs> yeah, that's so amazing. Can you describe at all? Like what he connected there for you? Yeah, sure. So, um, with, with divorce. So for me specifically, um, I was with my dad most of the time. So they had, it was roughly 50, 50, but I lived with my dad primarily. And so with that, as a child, you translate that it's abandonment. From your um, exactly. So, um, it's not that she actually abandoned me. She was a very present part of my life, but she wasn't living with me anymore. So, um, it was different points like that. And when a child feels abandoned or they feel, um, and I was not abused by my parents, but I bring this up because it's really important to understand with adults who have chronic illness or with children who are experiencing things like ADD, they're, science and um, psychologists are making a lot of connection to that creating physical illness in somebody's body. Um, so for me to experience the abandonment and then of course with you know, getting divorced and, and having the trauma that's associated with that, because even the, the most calm divorce is still a divorce. Um, it, it all creates abandonment and sadness and deep grief and trauma that then creates inflammation in the body. So he could just look at every single, like even I was maybe three or four and there was an instance where I almost drowned and, you know, pointing back to that, I mean, that created a stress response that then lived in my body. So, um, so he was able to see and know fight or flight is your body's default, which is going to create that chronic stress and inflammation. Um, so those were sort of the points there that he connected. Wow. That's, that is a lot of deep work, I think, for people to really go back into either their conscious memories or through something like RTT and connect to the unconscious or subconscious memories yeah. to uncover those things and then figure out how to translate it and heal it kind absolutely. of in your timeline. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. And so you've been doing RTT now as a therapist for how many years? Almost two. Okay. And what kind of things have you dealt with? Are you um, focusing on other people with physical ailments to try and help them heal those? Yeah. So I do, um, I have done a lot of my work in that area. Um, but you know, the universe flows to you what you need and what you're here to sort of help facilitate. And, um, a common thread with a lot of my clients has been having childhood sexual trauma. So, um, I think at the time it was something that I was like, I really like, I don't want that to be my focus. It's so heavy. It's so much, but, um, it's, it's one in four, humans experiences that. So when you start to do this work, you uncover a lot more of that than you expect. And so I'll have women who come to me and they, you know, want to work on their self-worth or they want to work on self-love or building confidence or things like that. And then we, you know, start to uncover some of, some of that um, childhood sexual abuse that happened to them or, you know, in their teen years experiencing a date rape or something along those lines. And, um, and I, you know, holding space for those women to be able to really process that in a way that is 
almost like untethered. They're just able to really cry and let it out sometimes for the first time ever. Um, sometimes they didn't realize that it was something that happened to them. And so it's um, being able to look at it and objectively say, oh my gosh, I'm not crazy. There was a reason that I was feeling this way about things. And, um, and ultimately it's about taking their power back. It is about being able to feel safe in their bodies and being safe with other people and, um, knowing that they are, they are the Queens of their lives and they are the ones that call the shots and coming from that place at so much healing can happen so much faster. And then they're able to go after all of the things that they really wanted in their lives, whether it's, you know, starting businesses or getting married and like having a family or, you know, traveling the world, whatever that is for them. Um, so it's, it's a new shift and a new transition. And this is likely the very first time I'm talking about it very publicly, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm here for that and to hold space and to, to help those women, um, or men or, you know, find that healing. Well, that's exciting. Congratulations. Yeah. Does it feel you know, good to say it out loud? It really does. It really does. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like there's power in that. Just putting it out there to the universe. hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, one thing you said just reminded me of a quote. I have a, my youngest is 11 and she had a meme on her phone and it said, no, you're wrong. We're not princesses. We're Queens. Yes. <laughs> just, okay. I love yeah. it. I know. I love it. It's so, um, it's so beautiful that through, you know, memes and like social channels that these young girls are getting so many cool positive messages. And I know social gets such a bad rap, but you know, my, my own stepdaughter who's also 11, I mean, her Pinterest is just filled with all of these motivational quotes and things like that. So um, I love seeing that. Yeah, me too. And I feel like that's part of just my whole mission here is raising my children. I have a son and two daughters. Um, just raising them in the new paradigm. Yes. Not, not the old one that we're hopefully leaving behind. I know. I know. I, and I believe that we are, I, I think it's going to take a little bit of time and it's going to take, you know, people like us who are, you know, awakening and living in our authenticity and following our intuitions to raise small humans to become adult humans who think and work in the same way. Um, and then they're going to do the same thing. Yeah. I'm contagious. Uh, I know I'm, I'm getting chills. I've gotten chills a lot lately. I, I just know that such alignment bumps, I think is just yes. lively calls them. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, um, one of the things you said made me think I should ask you this. Do people have a lot of trauma, like sexual trauma, especially that is unconscious to them, like if it happened before, I don't know, age eight or something like that, that they really don't, like you said, they are doing an RTT session and a door opens and they're like, oh my God, like where, when did that happen? And why don't I remember it? Or yeah. Yeah. So, um, with my clients, I think more commonly what I've found is that many of them do have a sense. Um, some of them have very clear memories and recollections of it. Um, and then some of them are, you know, I had this sense that something wasn't quite right. And then it comes forward and they can see it, um, and process it and understand it. And, um, in the, the beauty of, I, it's, it's interesting because some people will say, I have this sense, but I'm scared to look at it. And um, 100% get that because it's, you know, very uncomfortable. It is so traumatic. It is so terrible, um, which is all an understatement for the actual emotions that are attached to it. But, um, but it is the thing that is living in their subconscious that is replaying beliefs and propelling them in whatever direction forward. So it's affecting them whether they're ready to see it or not. And I, being ready is the most important thing because you just really never know. But um, I will say that for the people who don't really, they don't really know what they've got feeling, when they see it, there's less of an attachment to what actually happened. So it's kind of like a, 
oh, I see this and I know that it's true, but I have no memory of it. So I have no emotion about it. Um, you know, okay, this is a thing that I'm seeing and that I can process it this way. I think what happens after is actually more important than what happens during the session because then you're able to start making connections to all the different things and all the different choices that you've made in your life that all came from that one thing. So um, because of that, I am a huge fan of having a therapist um, and making sure you have someone that you can talk to because if you're not, um, you know, some people can go through it and their, their nervous systems are strong and they have done a lot of work and they feel really capable. Um, but it's nice to have somebody to bounce that stuff off of. And for others, it's like, I, this is, this has changed my whole life. I need to have real conversations about it. Um, because it touches everything. I mean, it can touch the relationships that you choose to have it, the way that you present yourself in the world to the job that you, I mean, just, it can touch anything and you just never know. So love having therapists. Um, I offer coaching as a part of what I do for that reason. Um, because then it's just, it's just purely holding space. They may not need somebody to say, okay, and because you experienced this, now you do this. They just need somebody to listen to them. So, mm -hmm. um, I think making sure that you have that support is the most important thing following the session. Yeah, that is very valuable. And I have done a lot of talk therapy before and I mm -hmm. see the benefit of it, but without uncovering some of these deep emotional things, the talk therapy isn't getting people anywhere. That's right. That's so, right. yeah, so definitely kind of like you're coupling your functional medicine doctor with your RTT and, you know, Reiki or that kind of thing. You're yeah. also coupling these together because they're complementary and very necessary. Exactly. A hundred percent. Um, we all need a little bit more support. I mean, I think everybody should have a therapist and or a coach. I, mine thankfully is a combination of both. So I get the best of both worlds, which I love. Um, but yeah, I mean, the work is so important and the healing is so important. And the more that we are able to heal ourselves, we're able to have ripple effects just with the people around us. But, um, you know, tying into ancestral lines and things like that, uh, oftentimes when we heal something for ourselves, we're healing something for other people in our families, um, you know, whether that's immediate or, you know, and that gets into this whole other rabbit hole that we don't have to explore right now, but, um, my you know. curiosity was going there. <laughs> I will yeah, tell yeah. you, um, cause I'm thinking about my mom and her yeah. mom and all the trauma and, um, not trauma because I don't know about it because yeah. everyone was so tight lipped about it. Yeah. Um, talk about that just for a minute because yeah. it's interesting because so if I heal myself and how is that how can that affect them? Yeah. So I'm still sort of learning about that, but it's, it's all truly based on energetics. Um, and there are common thread experiences that, um, we will have passed down from generation to generation. So, um, it's, it helps, it helps us to adapt and survive in the world essentially. But, um, so, you know, if like my grandmother, my mother's mom, um, learned that I'm just going to make something up, but like if she learned that she survives in the world by keeping herself small, because if women speak up, then they are bad or naughty or troublesome. Um, it's something that she learns at a very cellular level that likely came from her mom, which came from her mom. And we can take that all the way back to everything that started the women's rights movement to begin with. You know what I mean? Um, and so that's all, it's just embedded in your system and in your cells and therefore it goes through the lineage. So when you're able to release that trauma for yourself, it actually has that ripple effect energetically for the women who came before you. Um, and then it never affects the women who come after, or if you're already someone who, you know, has a daughter, for example, you heal that in yourself and it helps to heal that for them. I say all this, I have no scientific proof of this, but um, it's definitely something that's been coming up a lot that I've been hearing about lately. So it's, it's just kind of interesting to play with and think about. Yeah, and I can see how that would affect my daughters actually, because I am 
now operating from a place of healing and of conscious awareness Mm -hmm. instead of how my mom raised me and her mom raised her. And so, you know, it's just like we're affecting the future generations by Mm -hmm. raising them in that, again, different paradigm. Absolutely. A hundred percent. Wow. That's, yeah. that is all exciting. Do you, um, I have written down on here, Dr. Joe Dispenza, what mm-hmm. is your feeling on what he's doing? Because he's doing, it kind of gets back to the physical healing, but he's doing spontaneous remissions and almost like healing circles mm-hmm. for people. And this may just be, if, have you studied him or read any of his books? So I have not um, studied him in depth and I didn't realize that he was doing those things. So I'm definitely going to have to look into it. Um, But I do uh, with him, I always show his TED talk to people when I'm trying to explain why what we do through RTT has a physical effect on the body. Okay. Um, Because it's, he's a doctor, he's a neuroscientist. It's very scientific um, and it helps lend that, you know, we're still in a place where people really want the science behind, you know, the magic, if you will. Um, and so I, from that standpoint, that's how I sort of work with Dr. Joe Dispenza, but, um, you know, he's, his books are on my list. They're just so, um, in depth and oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. you definitely have to get into your like thinking mind, but that's such a good point because one of the things that just lively explored a few years ago was what triggered my awakening because it spoke to that scientific side of me. Yeah. And Dr. Joe Dispenza definitely connects the mystical to it mm-hmm. um, at the possible risk of his credentials. But yeah, yeah I, it's, it's amazing. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm glad that you said that where you show people that TED talk because it does it's like oh this is scientifically yeah. proven and and he is just kind of his new message right now is just those um is it those like healings are really just proving to people you yes. know and they're believing it and it's changing yeah yeah you know, it's changing people's lives you have to believe that the healing is possible before it can take place Um, and so that's the, I mean, that is the greatest root of all is your belief that it is possible. And, um, sometimes it takes people different layers and different levels of healing before they're actually able to get there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm, I definitely talk of, like, I try to empower my children in that way, like acknowledging when they've done something that seems magical. You know, when they've healed themselves from something, you know, and it it gives them that um, awareness and, yeah. Well, it helps them to um, really understand the power of their bodies, right? Because our bodies can take care of themselves. Um, Obviously, we need to nourish them, but they our our bodies are incredibly powerful and they know how to heal themselves. Um, which is why I think, you know, digging into the subconscious through RTT and doing that kind of work is so powerful because when you tell the body that it no longer has to take care of you by giving you some sort of illness or, you know, anxiety or depression or, you know, whatever it is that you're working with, it kind of takes that sigh of relief and then it gets the systems working so that, you know, it, it can take care of itself and heal itself the way that it knows how. Um, our bodies are, you know, they, they know, they've got the blueprint, they know what to do. We just sometimes have to get put, push them in the right direction. Mm-hmm. So how did the intu- intuition and the channeling open up to you? Yeah, so um, I just started, you know, with, deciding to get divorced, I started to hear my inner voice really clearly. Um, And there were things that were coming through to me in dreams, but there was really this voice that was very clear. It was quiet. It almost felt like it was like at the back of my head um, that was like, you need to leave. Um, And so after that point, I just sort of, I acknowledged it. I listened to it. I did what I needed to do. And, and I would say it wasn't, um, the 
regular flow of the intuition wasn't steady until I'd gone through a lot of healing from getting divorced. Um, because there was a lot of, you know, there were a lot of really unfortunate things about it. And there were, um, things that I needed to untangle from and pieces of myself that really needed to be healed. Um, and it was when Jess Lively, um, when she really started traveling the world and started showing us through, I think it was with, with flow with intention online, how we can do this for ourselves and how we can create, you know, that flow and alignment for ourselves that, um, you know, I started, you know, journaling and writing to my intuition, but, um, what quickly started happening was it moved from just being like a couple of words and like a sentence here and there to that voice that was somewhere at the back of my head that was not my intuition anymore. Um, and I was able to start connecting in there and realizing that it was a connection with my guides. And so, um, I do have this ability where I can take that step back and I can feel it's a, um, people often ask me what it feels like and only recently have I been able to explain it. But, um, for me, it feels like this shift where my sense of self moves into the back and there's a pressure at the back of my head where I, I don't know, cause it, it's almost like, it sounds like they're coming from the top, but it's in the back. And, um, and I, you know, I get their messages and I can hear what they're saying and they will give me very clear messages for, you know, other people from time to time and that's getting easier. Um, and so, you know, as, as they speak to me, sometimes it's clear and I can, I can speak it out to other people, but, um, you know, sometimes it's just not the right time to share it with other people. So I don't do that. Um, and then I, you know, I have another friend through flow with intention who, um, encouraged me to dive into the Akashic Records. So I've started to work with that a little bit. And I mean, the, the clear language that comes from that and the, the, it's very descript storytelling that comes from that. It's, um, I don't know, it's just, it's a different connection and a different voice and a different feeling altogether. Hmm. Wow. That's a lot to dive into. I'm sure it's, a it's lot been, process. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I've tried before to like sort of open my third eye just to, to connect more with my intuition, mm -hmm. I guess, because that's Absolutely. where I feel like it's at. Um, yeah. If you work with the crown chakra energy, um, the more that you're able to open that energy up for yourself, the more that you'll be able to tap into that because being able to um, channel and speak with spirit is not unique. It is not something that only certain people can do. Um, it's just your willingness and your desire and your openness um, to hear it and to be present with it. Well, thank you for sharing that. Um, so tell me a couple more things about your RTT practice and what does a session look like or how long is it? Um, how many sessions does someone have to have to heal? Cause I know that's something that, you know, they're used to like a therapy session, which is yeah. you know, six months worth of weekly appointments. Um, yeah. so tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, sure. So for me, um, when I work with my clients, um, everybody is different. So I like to preface this by saying everybody is different and we all heal in our own way. But, um, when I have worked with people for physical illnesses, for the most part, it's been one, two hour session. Um, and they've not needed, you know, I, I offer a follow-up as a part of it, but for the most part, they don't need it. Um, which is really amazing to heal things like endometriosis and vaginismus and fibromyalgia and SIBO. And, um, you know, I worked with a client who had Epstein Barr, um, and had some real physical pain in his back specifically, but you know, the back pain was gone. Um, you know, it just things like that. I, I mean, in two hours, it, it's crazy, crazy good. Um, but again, everyone is different. So sometimes, you know, it's a little bit deeper and you need to dig a little bit more and, and that's perfectly okay and wonderful too. Um, so I do, I work with them through RTT, um, 
you know, oftentimes in my sessions, I am also working with their own guides. So especially when we get to the transformation phase at the end where we are, you know, putting the new language in their subconscious, um, the guides come in and they take over and they have some thoughts on, you know, what you need to hear and, and all of that. And that makes its way into the recording, which I think really helps to personalize it. Um, and I've also started incorporating human design. So um, I'm a huge believer in that, just in the sense that I think it validates the things that, you know, we might already know about ourselves, but feel we have to change because society says, um, and once my clients have all of that and they're working more in alignment with, you know, their soul, things just, just start to flow and they're magnetic and it's just absolutely incredible. Mm -hmm. I, I've heard of human design a lot, but recently I joined, um, do you know Sri Mati? She, yes. um, okay. Yeah. She's she amazing. Has, yeah. She is the, the water tiger community. And inside that she talked about human design and I had done an astrology reading, like a mm -hmm. full astrology reading and all of my charts. And, and then I did just recently this week, go on to the human design website nice. and I'll have to put that in, in the show notes because the basic one is free. It doesn't give yeah. you a lot, but for $39, you can have the whole oh, yeah. explanation. Um, but I definitely believe, again, that's probably the science side of my brain that likes to see mm -hmm. what my soul really intended when I came here on that exact exactly. second in time. So have you pulled your report? I did. Mm -hmm. What is your type? I'm a generator. Nice. Is that I right? Love that. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you're definitely more geared toward um, like working and getting stuff done and making it happen. Um, but uh, taking a step back from that like immediate emotional response to let it settle in so you can kind of feel into it and know how you're feeling about it before you actually take a step forward and make a decision. Mm -hmm. Sound like you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, well, that, um, that's been cool that I've just kind of explored this week. And it's, it's good for people, I think, to have all the information that they can to work with. Mm -hmm. And um, Srimati is an uh, amazing mystic mother kind yes. of energy. And she says that about herself. But I just love, like, I love listening to her talk about how she is with her kids. Mm. Uh, where she's like always making music with them and, you know, like just sort of letting them be their own people. Uh, it's incredible. Yeah. Do you have kids? Um, I have two yeah. bonus kids. Okay. From yeah. your remarriage? Uh, from my boyfriend. Okay. We're, we're just partnered. We're not married. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, I definitely like her message on parenting and yeah. I feel like my kids are in the traditional school system, but I am, I'm really trying to implement the connection mm -hmm. and letting them explore and empowering them to explore their own divine nature. And <laughs> for me, that's been a journey because I grew up in a very traditional Christian kind of mm -hmm. paradigm. Yeah. So going from, you know, telling my kids kind of what to do and, you know, yeah, that even just how to fit into this model that society is creating for us mm -hmm. um, as the old paradigm and now seeing how you can actually empower them to find the truth in themselves and let them, you know, be led by that. Absolutely. Um, Rob Bell, are you familiar with him? I love, love him. <laughs> love the way that he talks about raising kids too. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I think he has some cool perspectives. What does he call it? Um, launching rockets. Yep. Launching yeah. rockets. Yeah. 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 So, um, I, and I love, I love having it come from his very like Christian background too. Um, I mean, my dad was raised Catholic, so there's, you know, I went to church as a child and all of that. So it's been cool to come across somebody who is still very much, you know, he's a man of God and, um, but he does it in such a way that's so open and it, it's like a breath of fresh air. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My like 
I will say former Christian friends, like the people that I know who are still in like the Christian faith really like him as, um, I don't know, he's more like of a, what do you call it when they're, um, it's like a modern, Mm. I don't know, more like liberal kind of pastor, but he really doesn't claim to be like a pastor per se anymore. Um, but yeah, I like him too. And I, I feel like that's how I'm now trying to raise my children. And I actually thought my next book was going to be about parenting, but I'm like, eh, I might need to get through a couple more years <laughs> before I write that book. You're going to collect all the data, right? Yes. Yes. We have a couple more years of that. What is the uh, writing process like for you? Um, you know, it's funny cause I hear about other people, like other like influencers who have written books and they're like, Oh, I just go away for two months. And then I just spoke. I'm like, Oh my God, if I could get away for 30 minutes, I am like on fire. Um, so I started writing my book and like over um, Memorial day weekend, I kind of took weekends mm-hmm. where I could send my family away. Yeah. And be alone to really just have maybe the bulk of it. And then that was a year ago. So I just published my book um, in August of this year. So it took me about 15 months of weekends and, you know, two, three hours just alone. And um, so, yeah, it has, it's been good. Like, I feel like writing um, didn't, necessarily come easy. It wasn't hard. I, you know, I just actually scheduled a call. Um, sorry, my voice is, <laughs> my voice is still coming back from my coughing. Um, I just scheduled a call with, um, an editor because, you know, I, I'm the personality that I just, I wrote it. I needed to get it out into yeah. the world. Um, and at the time I didn't have the money to pay an editor and, um, now I ended up selling a piece of property and I have some cash. So I'm like, you know what, I need to use that to just make sure it, um, puts the correct, the, like the best foot forward. Absolutely. Um, so I'm happy with it. I like how the voice is and how it sounds and how it feels. But I also kind of did a really good job at the beginning and that I feel like I did a good job maybe towards the end, but the middle is like a little gray, gray area. Still, so I don't know. It, it was like 200 pages. So wow, that's amazing. Yeah, it was, it was something I just needed to do and I'm happy that it's out and I'm actually speaking tomorrow. Um, uh, at a book event for it. So it gives me a platform mm-hmm. to speak from and just yeah. talk about, you know, parenting from this different perspective Absolutely. and how, you know, leaving the church sort of played in this and how I actually found God in myself and yes. you know, like a whole bunch of things. That's beautiful. So thanks. Are you thinking about writing a book? I, yeah, I mean, I, I've been a writer since I could write. So, um, for me that, yeah, it's this time of, um, platforms is interesting because everybody is really hot to trot on, you know, more of the podcast and visual stuff. And I'm like, but, but written word, what about written word? So, um, I've, you know, started several novels that I have never finished and things like that, but I can feel that something is sort of on its way. Um, and so I'm always fascinated to talk to other writers to see what that process is like for them. Yeah. I, I have to admit, I kept just kind of like opening to the universe and saying like, okay, I'm ready. Like hit me with it, you know? Absolutely. And then it wouldn't really come. And so huh. then I would just start writing something. And I feel like, um, when I talked to my astrologer during that astrology reading, she was like, okay, you're trying so hard to listen and you don't realize it's just speaking through you while you're, yeah. it's just coming and you're, you're trying to listen really intently and you're not trusting 
yourself. Mm -hmm. So that's my advice. It might not come in this flowy Eckhart Tolle kind of way, <laughs> but it's, I love that. it is still you speaking. Oh, that's beautiful. So why don't we wrap up? Thank you so thank much you. for being here. I'm so happy to have met you. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for doing this with me. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. And I will link to um, your website. Awesome. Uh, how else can people get a hold of you? Instagram is good too. Um, are you on there just so people have it? Yeah. So my Instagram is Laura Lee. It's L A U R A L E A dot I O. Thank you. Oh yes. All right. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye.